and welcome to the boardroom series. My name is Lisa B and I'm from the Real Estate Hotline and this morning we're going to be speaking with Rick Hockey. Rick is from First National in Port Headland in WA and Rick is the number one salesperson for First National in WA and I wanted to actually share with you Rick's story because he's been through some incredible highs and some incredible lows in his real estate career and I think it's something that a lot of us will be able to identify with and so what Rick is going to share with us shortly is how he dealt with the lows in real estate, what he did, how he got back up and how he's actually maintaining his number one salesperson status in First National. So I really hope you enjoy this interview and please leave some comments about what you think and, and if you've actually been through similar things, uh, let us know. I'd be really interested to see. Okay, I hope you enjoy it. So first, Rick, I'm so excited for you about all the awards that you've won. And I'd just like to sort of just get an idea of some of the things that you've won. And also at the recent First National Awards, some of the awards that you've won there. Can you, can you share with us some of those? Because I know how, how important awards are. Yeah, look, yeah, awards are important. It was really good um, having a good backing team to help me get these. But I guess when I first started, I got Rookie of the Year in my first year. I think that was in the first eight months um, that I had in that year. And since then, it's been, you know, um, very, very productive with awards. And that most recently, I guess I have been in the top 100 agents in the country twice now. Mm. And I was, I was fairly close up, up to the, the front end of that. So I was, I was really happy to get that. Um, I have been in the REWA, uh, I was in the top three for REWA for selling the most amount of properties uh, last year. Mm. And with the Headland, with the first national awards, I, I also got top selling agent uh, for listings sold, uh, top selling agent for for property sold. Uh, I got the sale agent of the year, and I got diamond award achiever. So, and for the first time ever at the first national awards, they allowed me to have a speech because normally you're not allowed to. And I guess um, with the story that I had to go along with it, um, quite a few people. New Ray Ellis, who's the CEO there, uh, gave sanction to say, "Well, you know, allow me to have have a quick speech," which I was I was really thrilled about. Yeah. Awesome, because that's um, interesting about you is your story in real estate, and that's why I really wanted to share this with everybody as well. But before we go into what's happened, you know, sort of the highs and the lows, how did you start in real estate? Like, what, how, when, when did you start? All right. Yeah, look, I've been in Headland for 38 years now and I worked 28 years of the, that or 29 years in BHP. Um, during that time I was at BHP, I had a cleaning business and I also started to work a, a property portfolio. So I was in at Headland First National quite a bit, buying a bit of property here and there, but also had a cleaning business, which I had a contract uh, at Headland First National. Um, the principal here, Morag Lowe, said, you're in here that often, you should really be no. working here. <laughs> it all started from there, and then when I found out what's involved and, um, you know, the money you can make, uh, the lifestyle and everything, it just all clicked for me straight away, and, and from that day, I got my uh, real estate licence and I made, uh, I made the change fairly quickly. Wow, and you haven't looked back, have you? All right, so, so in your career, you've had some real highs, you know, your, your awards and all that sort of stuff, but you've also had some real lows. So can you talk us through what's happened? Just so a lot of, a lot of agents, I think, will be able to identify you know, sort of the, the, the highs and the lows and, and how you kept going. Yes, uh, 2009, I started and got off to a flying start. I put a contract on a property in the first week. It was during the times of uh, boom period in, in Headland uh, just to give you an idea of that, Lisa, in Port Hedland, um, medium price was around eight to 900000 and in South Hedland, it was around seven 700000 um, The highest rent that we had in time, and this will blow you away, was $5,000 a week that we had a few properties out in Pretty Pool, $5,000 a week. Wow. So we had a lot of investors, all of our properties being sold to investors because they're getting a rate of return between, between 10 and 15%. Now, those first two or three years for me uh, were quite significant, sold a lot of property, commissions were good, I added to my property portfolio, and things were going pretty smoothly, um, pretty happy with it. 
But then things changed, um, and this is where I got lost. Um, we had all the construction finish in Headland. We had the iron ore prices plummet, and all of a sudden the rents came down because people moved out of town. The sale prices quickly followed behind that and I had a, a few double whammies where my property portfolio all of a sudden um, lost a lot of its equity mm. and I found it hard to sell and I started doubting everything that I was doing. Um, you know, I doubted whether I could sell property. Um, I was wondering about how am I going to support the family with you know, the big decline in my property portfolio and everything. What would people think of me? You know, I was once quite successful and now here I am, I'm in the depths of despair. And mm -hmm. to me, I was. Um, and that all came very true to me. I was out in the property and I was in someone's lounge and I was doing an appraisal. And it was a lovely couple. And uh, when I told them they'd bought this house for 700,000, that the house was probably only worth 300,000, they broke down and started crying. Um, in front of me and I was thinking, geez, I'm in a similar situation here mm. and I felt like crying myself. And you did. And it's, um, it, it really hit home then and that was a bit of a turning point. Um, I really struggled for about 18 months and I had a lot going through my mind as how I could work it all out. And I guess one thing I kept saying to myself, what can I do? What is there? And you generally find when you continue to ask yourself questions, your, your, your mind, your brain automatically comes up with some ideas and suggestions. And one of those was start talking to other people who are, who've been in similar situations who are in that similar situation where they're selling in a depressed market. So I got out there, I rang some friends, I rang a lot of people who I didn't know. Um, I've talked to you a fair bit. Uh, I got a mentor. And all of a sudden, people were saying, hey, this is nothing new. You, you know, I was in a bit of an um, area where it was easy to sell in my first three years, but now it's a depressed market. But you can still sell in a depressed market. So I thought if they can do it, surely I can do it. So with the help of those people, um, I started changing the way I think about things and how I do. And, and, and I went out there. And I really had a crack at it and changed my mindset more than anything else. And things started to work and evolve. I came into the third stage, I call it, as to what happened. And I reinvented myself in doing things differently, being more upbeat, uh, no doom and gloom. But, you know, there is positives out of everything. Um, I got some, I continued to get mentoring from different people and through that stage, um, you know, I've, I've built up that I started consistently selling two or three, five or six, and then 10 to 12 to 15 wow. prop properties per month. And as I got confidence, it just continued to grow. And so I guess those three stages of being successful, then I got lost and then I reinvented myself just goes to show in any market, we had pullbacks, Lisa, of between 60 and 70% in our market. In a normal market, you would get a 10 to 20% pullback. Um, mm -hmm. Now that was both in rentals and sales. So it was a massive turnaround. Mm -hmm. So I guess my message to people out there would be that, look, if you're in a tough market, there's been none tougher than this and you can turn it around. Exactly. So it definitely would have made you a better salesperson, wouldn't it? I like. I bet you you thought you were a a great salesperson when you first started, and then now you actually know you are, don't you? Sort of going through that. How how did that change it? How did that path like? How did that change you as a salesperson? Uh, very huge impact, and I'm glad I've gone through this. I, I'm glad I've come out the other end. When when I first started, I thought I was a good agent. Mm. Um, but I had no idea of what a good agent was, to be honest with myself right now. That environment, the first two or three years, it created a false economy and also a false image of myself. Yeah. Um, I had to go through that, get the kick in the bum and uh, get moving and that during the, the phase where I got lost. But had I not gone through this, I wouldn't be where I am now. And even now, I say I'm still a long way. There's so much more for me to learn. But the thing is, I'm hungry for it because I know you can get better and better. Yeah, isn't that great? All right, so you're obviously somebody who adapts 
to, to changes in the market and, and things that happen in life. And what's been your key to this? How do you, how do you adapt? How, how do you just pick yourself up and keep going? Just have an absolute open mind. You don't know everything, but there are people out there who can just add to what you do. So I continue to talk to a lot of people, and this is just general conversation. I don't even know, haven't even met some of these people. You put me in contact with Ryan McCann, which was fantastic. Yeah, which Thank is you for great, that. which is great. <laughs> yeah, and I'm, I'm meeting up with him at the convention. So... I guess continually search for new ideas, new things. Now that you're on a bit of a roll to learn, there's always learning out there. Don't think you know it all. Um, this real estate industry is changing so much. You must make sure you, you change. You don't have to be perfect with everything and I'm far from it, but you do have to have the willingness to move and search new ideas and it'll all happen if you've got the open mind yeah that's right and i think you know as you said i think you can learn something from everyone no matter what and also we were speaking about it before the video started is like everybody needs a millennial you know we, we sometimes we need help with the technology or we need help with something that maybe you're too busy for that you can bring somebody else in that, that can also help but I mean, you've, you've, you've come a long way in that space too, haven't you? Like getting the idea and getting the, the big picture of, of what you need and who you need too, don't you? you yeah, look, look, definitely. Um, and, and look, there's some things that I'm not very good at and um, that's where I reach out, uh, get some help and get other people involved to help me out. So I know what my strong points are. Um, my weaker points, uh, others will help me out with. And, you know, sometimes that's a paid position and sometimes it's not. But I generally find that there's lots of help out there. All you have to do is ask. Yeah, hundred percent. So you're consistently making eleven to twelve sales a month. What do you do day in, day out to get that? You know, are there processes, systems that you use? What do you do every day? I'm consistent. Uh, I'm told I'm consistent and I'm persistent, um, and I say what I I will do. So if I, I say I'm going to do something, well, I will follow up and do it. Um, I, I have a high work ethic, I'm told as well, and I do love working, um, I do love achieving and coming out with a, an end result, and that really drives me. It, it's not so much the money, it, it's, it's how you conduct yourself with people, and you're in between sellers and buyers, and it's challenging, and you've got to be challenged in your life all the time, but I, I love that challenge, and I love getting up, sometimes I'm up five o'clock in the morning, um, I'll come into work, clear all my emails, make sure I'm ready. Who am I going to ring? Who am I going to prospect? Um, what listings do I have to chase up to get the paperwork back? All those sorts of things. Um, I have it pretty well sorted out by the time 8 o'clock comes around because then the phones start ringing, the emails start coming in. Mm -hmm. So being consistent, being persistent, um, I think are really important and having a good work ethic mm -hmm. and enjoying what you do. Yeah. So you really set your day up the day, like sort of in the morning and know what you're going to do and have that outcome and your to-do list, if you like, and, and just make sure you do what you say you're going to do. That's your, your key. Yeah. Yeah. I've, I've got, you know, I've got my diary there. I have it electronically. I also have a hard copy and that and put things down and I know what I have to do. And first thing I get in the morning, uh, last thing at night, I make sure that I have got back to every single person that has contacted me by email or by phone. I try and get back to them within one hour. Yeah. If I can't get back to them with one hour, then they definitely get some form of contact by me by the end of the day. I will not. I love to hear that. I love to hear that. So many salespeople don't get back to get back to the buyers and sellers. Like it's just unbelievable. So I love to hear that. So how many properties for you to list or for you to sell 11 to 12 properties a month? How many do you have to list a month? Are you, are you very big on statistics and ratios? Do you know all your ratios and statistics and all that sort of thing? Look, yes, they're all there. As far as ratios is converting, you know, you go out and do prospecting or appraisals and how much they convert to listings and that. Look, honestly, I do not keep that there. I've got a fair idea of what it is, but I don't dwell on it. Okay. Um, I do have a couple of whiteboards that I have that's very visual. And on one whiteboard is my listing whiteboard and it has four months on it. So for those four months, I know how many properties I've listed 
and it's very visual right there in front of me. Then I, the second whiteboard I have set up, it has four months on it as well, how many sales. I make sure that I've got that listings whiteboard. That's the one that's going to be real busy because mm -hmm. if I keep that busy, the sales whiteboard stays busy as well. Absolutely. Perfect. And so what systems do you have in place that you never change? So we've spoken about you doing your, you know, you sort of setting up the day. What about prospecting? What's your number one prospecting source? Is it phone, door knocking? Just some of those other systems that you won't deviate from. Okay. Um, a lot of our buyers back in the days when there was big returns, they're investors. Um, so a lot of our prospecting that's done by phone, Mm -hmm. So on the phone a lot, people mm -hmm. say too much, but yes, you've got to get on the phone, talk, talk, talk. Emails are fine and you can send out your emails to your database, keep people informed of what's happening. Mm -hmm. And that's important to have that scheduled up to be happening every week, fortnightly, monthly and anniversaries, um, of course. Mm -hmm. But you must get on the phone. If you can't be belly to belly with that person and talk to them, then get on the phone and talk to them, get to know a bit about them, know that they've, they've got a wife, they've got two kids, one's interested in football and is a keen Eagle supporter or whatever. Log all that information so next time you've got a real connection with them, they're not going to go anywhere. When they're ready to list, they're gonna to come to you. So making that connection, um, never ever lose a human side of it. We can get caught up in all these systems and send the emails out. But that personalised human side of it is really important to me. Yeah, hundred percent. Okay, so for somebody who may be in a sales slump or a, a listing slump, what would be your top tips that you could share with people? All right, is it okay if I cheat a bit here because I have written down a few of my of course, tips now? Of course. This is, um, I put this down, put a bit of work into uh, putting a presentation together, which I gave down in Perth a couple of times to real estate agencies who were going through a bit of a struggle and just to say, hey, you can do it. And out of that, I put some of these tips down in, in no particular order, but they're all as important as each other. And I live by them day in, day out. Awesome. Um, the first one is to be brave and ask for help. People love helping. It's, it's not that people won't help you, it's that you will not ask. Mm. So be brave and ask for help when you need it. Really important. The second one I've got here is take action. Doing something is better than doing nothing. You sit on your hands and you think, how do I get out of this? Everyone else's fault and all that sort of stuff. Just do something because once you just start that wheel rolling a little bit, it gathers a little bit of speed. My third one is take responsibility for everything. If you're a failure, it's your fault. If you're a success, it's your fault. Mm -hmm. So always take responsibility. And even sometimes when I don't think it's my fault, I still take the responsibility because it makes me feel better. It makes me uh, be more proactive. More in control. More in control. Yeah. Um, you know, you do not get anything out of blaming circumstances or other people take responsibility get on with it yeah my next one is uh, learn to love listing find multiple ways to list then you will sell mm -hmm. so the first most important thing love listing get those listings on the board make sure that they're right price the, the, the buyers will come to you yeah my next one be honest helpful and prepared to do things that other agents aren't prepared to do. Mm -hmm. So there's some hard stuff there that you've got to do and you may be uncomfortable with it. That's the stuff you should nail. Yeah. Um, my last one here is everyone needs direction and purpose. Work out why you want to do this. There's got to be a reason as to drive. Is real estate really for you? Do you want to, what do you want to get out of it? Why are you doing it? If you can work that out, everything else above that can be put in place. Mm, I think you, you've really got to love real estate, don't you? I think it's really got to, it's got to be your passion. You can't half do real estate, can you? Look, you can't. Um, I guess the good thing I had a conversation with someone yesterday, actually real estate is something that you can go as hard as you like or as soft as you like. 
Mm. Um, you can earn as much as you like or as little as you like. It, it's mm. your choice. But if you really want to be good at it, then yes, you, you need to work hard at it. You need to love it because mm. it will take up some of your time. But as you get better and um, you're putting out um, a lot more listings, a lot more sales, you will then come with structures that will keep you at a manageable level for lifestyle. Mm, 100%. And I've got something to share with you. Look what came in the mail. So I wow. ordered a book. That's the book that you're in. So you're in the book here. And so this is the first time you've seen it. So that's your bit here. So you've shared with us in the book a lot of pearls of wisdom in here as well. So I've ordered the, uh, the copies of this, so you'll be getting this soon. So everybody keep an eye out for this one. Rick shares a lot more um, insights and wisdom in the book as well. And I want to thank you again for being in the book. I really appreciate it. And thank you for today. I think you're amazing. I think you've got an amazing story in real estate. And I really look forward to seeing where you go from here. And you were talking about different things you're going to be putting in and all that sort of stuff. So I'm just really excited to see where you go from here. Yeah, look, thanks very much, Lisa. I must admit, when you sent me an email through, I deleted it fairly quickly, but you're fine. <laughs> Rick! <laughs> sorry, sorry about that. I get so many emails and I read it, and oh, yeah, is it a promotion thing or whatever? But your, oh, and, and this is how it works, your follow-up call was personalised to me and straight away we connected and I knew what you were about and I said, yeah. I'm, I like this young lady. I'm, I'm going to jump on board and it's been a great relationship ever since. I think it's been yeah. about eight, 10 months, hasn't it? Yeah, it has. And I'm glad. I'm glad that I rang you. I'm glad that I found you on online and all that sort of thing. So yeah, it's been amazing. All right. Well, thank um, you again. I'm oh, sorry. What did you say? No, that's fine. If, if it's okay, I'll just finish up with something, uh, Lisa, that I sort of put together. Look, I'm a butcher by trade and I had limited schooling. Um, but my catch cry is this has nothing to do with being successful. Your mindset and determination to find a way will make you successful. So if people are out there think I haven't got the skills, or I haven't got this, I haven't got schooling, whatever, it doesn't matter. Do you want to do it? Do you want to be successful? Because you'll find a way to get yeah, there. Yeah, 100%. Like you said, ask the right questions and you get the answers, don't you? You certainly do. It's all within you. It is. All right. Well, thanks a lot, Rick, and I'll send you the book as soon as it comes. Excellent. Thanks very much, Lisa. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Rick.